We just left Rock Nation right now. We out in New York passing out our CDs. It's Player Familiar on deck. Rock Nation, on to the next one. Let's go, baby. Before Don Tolliver, we featured on Travis Scott's hit single, Can't Say, off of Astroworld. In the middle of Houston, Texas, is a world called Astroworld. Bring the whole family for thrilling rides, exciting adventures, and memories you'll cherish for a lifetime. Before Don Tolliver would have over 700,000 followers on Instagram, 100,000 followers on Twitter, and was fast approaching half a million subscribers on YouTube at the time of this recording. You got a large fan base out there, too. Man. Very passionate fan base. Listen, man. That's all I want. Been trying to build up, man. It's a real fan base that, like, can vibe with what I'm coming with and understand what I'm coming with. Before Don Tolliver would accompany The Weeknd on his most recent world tour. How's that feel? Yo, the Weeknd's one of those guys out here. Yeah, he is. He's the guy. He is the guy. You know, that's going to be a big stage. Yeah, it's going to be a big one. Heaven to hell going to let me float, set me free, OG. Don Tolliver has been a fixture of Houston's hip-hop and R&B scene since dropping his first joint mixtape, Play a Familia, back in 2017. No subsequent hits like No Idea and his collab on Can't Say with Travis Scott and No Regrets with Eminem have only furthered his newfound fame and name recognition the world over. How were you on M's radar? Was Did somebody else put you on his radar? Like, how did, um, how did that happen? I think, really, you know, to be crazy, be 100% honest, I think M was already on tip of, like, what I had going on. For years, it seemed the main problem with artists coming out of Houston is that most people would have trouble relating to the culture down there if they weren't already a part of it. Now, it's a bit of a mixed batch of talent. We're talking Destiny's Child to the late DJ Screw and more recently, Travis Scott. Now, for whatever reason, the musical identity of the town, it just didn't translate to the rest of the world. So how did Don Tolliver manage to buck that trend? Well, that's what we're here to find out. What's going on, fam? It's your boy, Michael McCrudden, back at it again with a brand new Before They Are Famous on another rapper primed to break out in a big way. And we're getting ready for the XXL to drop their new freshman class list for 2020, and we predict that he's gonna make this list. Now, are there any others that we should feature on this channel? You be sure to let us know in the comments down below, and I'm gonna keep this short and sweet. So now let's get into this video. Don Tolliver was born Caleb Zachary Tolliver on June 12, 1994 in Houston, Texas. In fact, it was the same day the Houston Rockets took a 2-1 series lead over the New York Knicks in the NBA Finals on their way to their first ever championship. Now, who could have imagined that only 24 years later? Well, Caleb, he would be taking part in a hype video for those same Rockets who were looking to ignite their 2018-2019 to season. Now, a more talented team might have won the championship that year, but that's still a pretty huge honor that only ever goes to hometown heroes. Now, unfortunately, at the time of this recording, well, there isn't a ton of Before They Are Fame photos for Don, but with the current trajectory we're expecting for his career, well, I'm sure we'll be making an update in the coming years. Now, Don, he grew up in the neighborhood of Aleph, which is also known as SWAT, or Southwest Aleph, Texas. The A-Leaf is in the building. Shout out to A-Leaf. b Jackson State, Grambling in the building every week. Yes, yeah. He was raised under the loving wings of his mom Carla, his father Bongo, and they always kept the house full of music. He was listening to artists growing up including Swiss A House, Stevie Wonder, Marvin Gaye, Sade, and Maxwell always in heavy rotation. In a leaf, well, he went to the Hastings High School and even though he was always jamming to personal favorites like Michael Jackson, Bobby Womack, and NERD, well, he told Fader that the idea of making his own music, it really came into focus when. I was at the barbershop one day and I heard music Soul Child playing. After I heard that Soul Child, it pushed me to really want to go crazy. Learn melodies, sounds, everything. I just pushed forward after that. Another big influence for Don was Kendrick Lamar's 2010 mixtape, Overly Dedicated, especially songs Alien Girl and PNP 1.5. He told Complex. This is what turned me into the artist I am today. I remember I was in the locker room one day after school, sitting down, headphones in, listening to Overly Dedicated, and I was listening to Dom Kennedy, Locals Only. That's what turned me into Don Tolliver. I just felt like I was on a journey and I didn't even know it. Those records gave me a different type of persona. The seeds were planted. Despite having a bunch of go-to artists as a youngster, well, Don, he didn't have a lot of posters on the walls of his room. Now, instead, he had stacks and stacks of video games. We're talking Jack and Dexter, Ratchet and Clank, and Grand Theft Auto, those were his favorites. Speaking more on this, he told Complex, Open world, that's my type of drip. 
In fact, it was this love for video games that ended up unlocking his first documented moment of creative expression when he recorded his first song, I'm in the building. He did this using PlayStation Eye Camera. Yeah, you remember that thing? Well, let me just show you in case you don't. Yeah, what a throwback. The song featured Don rapping over a YouTube instrumental of Tiger's 2014 song, Make It Rain. And we recorded it by blacking out the camera and playing the beat in the background while he dropped his lyrics over top. It was a janky setup, but it did the trick. Now Don, he hadn't always been one of the most popular kids in his neighborhood. So after dropping the track on the kids at school, well, recognition brought with him a new sensation of gratification and acclaim. He saw an opportunity to see some momentum and he went back to his PlayStation I once more, this time to record Pep Rally. It got to the point where even the coolest kids at school would walk up to me like, sing that song, bro, and let me know like, man, I might be able to do this. After graduating from high school, his best friend Josh, he moved into an apartment on Derry Ashford Road, and he brought a ton of proper studio equipment with them. Now the two, they would spend all their time in this makeshift studio, and Josh, well, he ended up taking on the stage name of Young Josh 93, while Caleb, he took on the moniker of Don. I tried and failed, had to triumph, had to do different things to win. You know, it, that's where the that's where the darn that's where you get the darn from. And the Tolliver is, is my last name. Josh and Don they formed a partnership called Playa Familia and this enterprising duo. Well, they pushed their rap products hard. Now we actually found some old footage of them out in New York City where they handed a copy to Joe Budden and they also visited Rock Nation. But really, they were there to give their CD to anyone that would take a listen. I mean, they were even giving it to people on the street who actually like had no way of actually listening to their music. They were just giving them away. Who's doing? All right. What I need to know, though, is who the f you know your place. Uh, Pablo. Okay. Player, 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 man. We out here in Tribeca. I repeat, we out here in Tribeca, man. I'm Donnie. I'm out here with Young Josh 93, man. You know what's going on? Uh, 105.1. We out here, Breakfast Club. Shout out 93. What the breakfast at? We had the breakfast club. But they did have a hero to look up to. Travis Scott, he was becoming a recognizable name the world over. Now Don, he began to look up to this hometown hero as someone to emulate, and he began muling over the switch from hip hop to more of an R&B sound. With my music, I, I really want to say like, you know, hip hop R&B, if I had to put it in the, in the, in the genre. Mm -hmm. But you know what I'm saying? I, I, I lean more to like the R&B side a lot, you know, I, I figure out that's like my favorite, favorite, but you know, I turn up with the hip hop for sure. One day in the studio, a friend of his told him that while his rapping was tight, it was his melodies that really set him apart. Now Don, he locked into this skill set with a fresh mindset after having had this conversation. Now after spending years trying to perfect melodies, company, a three and a half minute song with only one verse, well this was the result. In terms of inspiration for how he sings, well Don says that the biggest influence in his life, well it was his father Bongo. Dad was a musician so it's like, so crazy when I listen to his old music that he made. It's like a mirror of me. Apparently there was a reason that dad, he used to play so much Swisha House back in the day. Now he'd actually appeared on a few Swisha tracks, including Swang Wide. When Don was 19, he and his father, they even recorded a song together called Southside. But at the time, well, neither of them took their collab very seriously. Instead, Don, he continued to focus on his projects with Josh. With Don making the change to singing, we'll play a familia. They hit local showcases all over Houston with a new sense of motivation. <laughs> Ray came through a promoter known as Bix Breezy, who had a concert that was called Hugh Stock Going On. Working underground, I always was uh, working underground with like uh, promoters such as like Bob Breezy, shout out Bob Breezy, definitely worked with her. She was like the main person that I, I just stick with me and let me do a lot of shows, you know what I'm saying? I got a lot of experience within the Houston streets like that. In the spring of 2017, after finally dropping their Play of Familia mixtape, well, Josh and Don, they saved up their money to fly to New York City and hustled to get their music in the hands as many people as possible. Southwest, Ailey, Texas, New York City, Breakfast Club, Player, Player. Too much playing shit going on, man. He told you, man. I told y'all. 
Then in the winter of that year, Don, he released his solo songs, I Gotta and Diva on SoundCloud, each of which quickly amassed over 100,000 streams. Now this success, it spurred him to get to the club back in Houston even harder. He stated, I had to take over the city. That means every night for like three to five months straight. I was in every strip club, every club, in every DJ's face getting my record spun. This newfound solo success meant that Don, he was able to sign a record deal with Atlantic Records. But at the time, he was still living hand to mouth. I was sliding by, it wasn't glamorous, I left the streets alone to focus on music, I was losing money because I had to stay in the club all night and I couldn't work the way I had been working. I lost a lot but then again I gained so much because I focused on me more. I took my sh seriously and I was doing what actually made me happy. Then Don released his first mixtape Donnie Womack which received his first co-sign from Travis Scott. And soon enough, well then he signed with Scott's Cactus Jack imprint. Then life, it started moving real fast. Now he was recording in Hawaii with Travis and jumping on the Astro World Tour. After the success of his hit single, Can't Say, with Scott, well Don, he took a calculated step back as he tried to create an air of mystique about his work. When he ended his self-imposed hiatus, he hit us with the fire track, No Idea, and it was released just before his 25th birthday. But the track, it really didn't take off until closer to the end of last year when it became a viral sensation on TikTok. To date, it's been shared in over 8 million individual TikTok videos with many of its most popular shares clocking in over a million views each. After that, Don, he released Jack Boys with the other artists signed to Cactus Jack's imprint and most recently, he dropped his newest solo album, Heaven or Hell. Don's effortless style, it epitomizes where hip hop and R&B is at right now. He's young, he's trendy and he's making lots of kick-ass music which is exactly what Houston has been missing for a little while now. As for where Don Tolliver goes from here, well, I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see because this is before they are famous. My name's Mike McCredden. We drop a celebrity bio each and every day, so be sure to subscribe, turn on them post notifications, and let us know who's next in the comments down below. Whew! We just hit 3.24 million subscribers. Pretty big, pretty epic. If you're not already following me on Instagram at McCreddenM, go over there. You can also follow me on TikTok and Twitter. That's where I get to engage with you guys a little more personally. I'll see you guys in another video. Boom!